Hello everyone, my name is Megan and I'm a fourth year health sciences student and I'm also a health peer at SFU Health and Counseling. Today we are going to talk about self-awareness and how it can help us in naming and recognizing our emotions. Before we begin, I'd first like to respectfully acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the unceded traditional territories of the KK First Nations and the Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, Squamish, and Musqueam Nations. Today's video is about emotions and how to put them into words. Recognizing and naming the emotions we feel is one way that we can practice self-awareness. Self-awareness is one of the building blocks of cultivating resilience. Resilience is the increased ability to cope with various stressors in life. Self-awareness just means that you are aware of the way you feel, why you do what you do, and how those feelings and actions can have an impact on other people, because they absolutely do have an impact. Being self-aware is one of the first steps in learning how to communicate our emotions to others. Why do we want to do this? Well, when we are better able to recognize our emotions and give them names, we become better communicators, which can make us more effective in both our personal and professional relationships. Additionally, individuals who acknowledge and address their emotions with open minds experience lower levels of stress and higher levels of well being. Before we dive into naming emotions, let's talk a bit about the evidence based therapeutic practices that precede it. Dialectical behavior therapy, also known as DBT, is a form of talk therapy with roots in cognitive behavioral therapy, in which a person is guided through their emotions verbally. This enables individuals to move through their emotions without getting overwhelmed by them, which is something that many of us have felt at one point or another. We experience a broad range of emotions every day, so it's important to develop a strong emotional vocabulary to help us recognize, label, and navigate our emotions. A great place to start with naming emotions is Dr. Robert Plechik's Wheel of Emotions. There are different versions of varying complexity that exist, but we will use the version shown here. The wheel shows you the eight basic emotions, joy, trust, fear, surprise, sadness, anticipation, anger, and disgust. As you move towards the center of the wheel, the emotions become more intense. This can also be noted by the intensity of the color. The darker the shade, the more intense the emotion. For example, fear at its least intense feeling manifests as apprehension, and at its highest intensity, fear becomes terror. It is important to note that if emotions are left unchecked, they can intensify. So enhancing your emotional vocabulary can help you effectively navigate these emotions. The emotions between the colored sections of the wheel are combinations of the basic emotions. On the wheel, you can see that anticipation and joy combine to become optimism. To use the wheel when you are not currently feeling one of the emotions listed, try to put yourself in the shoes of that feeling. For example, think of a time when something happened to you, good or bad, but preferably good, and how it made you feel. Really put yourself into that feeling, and then look at the wheel. Look at the words in the wheel until you find something that resonates with what you're feeling, and remember that. One way to help you with naming emotions is the practice of mindfulness, which you can learn more about in one of our other videos for this series, linked below. A really great mobile resource to help you name and track your emotions is the Dailyo app. This free app can function as your mood tracker and gratitude diary. On the app, you can pick your mood and write down what you've been doing during the day. You can also add additional notes. Remember, labeling difficult emotions can help us recognize them and see them for what they are, emotions that come and go. It can be difficult to learn how to name and regulate emotions on your own. If you're experiencing strong feelings and would prefer to discuss your emotions and experiences with a counselor, SFU offers both individual and group counseling options. You can find out more about these services by checking out our website at www.sfu.ca backslash students backslash health. You can also find out about our other programs and outreaches by following us on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at SFUHCS. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you check out our other videos in this series. Bye!